talking to you half about anything that it is that we do uh, or, or any question, more importantly, about where you are in your career, uh, what you're struggling with. Uh, what you what you want some feedback on, some information on. Love to get into all of that uh, 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 and looking forward to it. So, yeah. All right. Go ahead, April. This is the homepage I'm talking about that we just, like, recently redid. And I think it does a really good job articulating sort of who we are, what we do at a very high level. And if you scroll down the page, there's a bunch of videos and me explaining um, a whole bunch, a whole bunch of things. Everything that we do from top to bottom, but our tagline, which states everything that you need to start, run, and grow a successful art business, uh, really does sum up what we do. You know, we we get pigeonholed as they're a website company. They're a website company, and yes, we do offer websites, but it is a tiny, tiny portion of what we do. Ultimately, we learned a couple of years ago uh, the hard way. By the way, if we are going to grow and be successful as a business, art storefronts. That is 100% dependent, surprise this one, but on how successful our customers are, on how much art and photography our customers are selling on a yearly basis. And so when you look at that as the problem that we're solving, you, 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 it, it becomes so much more than a website because a website is not enough. But still, we're gonna talk about the website. I'm gonna get into the other layers as we go down. So it does indeed all start with the website. I will pull one up because it'll make it more interactive. And, you know, Anyone that's been trying, attempting to sell art or photography for any period of time, I'll use Bono today, they know one yeah, thing conclusively, no selling art on in an e-commerce capacity digitally online is not like selling other items. It's not like selling swim fins or ladies' handbags or um, electric scooters or bicycles or anything else, right? Buying okay. art, okay, and buying art online is A, an extremely visual process, and B, an extremely friction build process and what do i mean by friction i mean friction is all of the various different things okay that will prevent a visitor to your website from turning into a buyer okay and so really everything that we do with our software is attempt to solve for this friction okay to solve for the friction to solve for how important the visual aspects are towards selling art and photography online and you know it, it's never any one feature Classic. it's all of the features so working together it can be little things you, like you when you select a media type which is join. canvas it changes to a canvas a gallery wrapped canvas most people don't even know what a canvas is and so we've developed special videos that show the differences the nuances in the real world what an actual canvas print looks like what's going to show up at their house uh, uh what are the high points of this one how are is canvas different than metal Oops, i missed a click on that and so you can see what a metal print looks like and how it's sitting flat eventually how it's hanging up all the nuances the intricacies because it is such a visual process buying art we have a feature called the wall preview uh, which allows you to cycle through various different room types again such a visual yeah, sadly, process sadly buying art. not only can you circle level through level the different room types and yes level. you can add your own room type images in we use some generic ones by design and you can size pieces up and down see what it's going to look like do i need a 36 by 49 is that too big do i instead want a 28 by 38 we're making it easier for your potential customer to get to a buying decision what if they want to their wild their walls aren't white right what if they're this ugly color or there's something a little bit darker is the piece going to look good with this color right because again buying art is just such an incredibly visual process um you know another feature that that everybody likes to talk about that we get a lot of plaudits for is we Here have this, we are we have on this feature, artist and excuse me, mute that, called Live Preview with AR, okay? And what this is, is this allows somebody to come to your website with their telephone, can be iPhone or Android, you can see the phones here on the right-hand side, and without downloading any apps, uh, they can just use their phone, their camera, and press one button on your website that says Live Preview, and what this is going to do, it's going to take the camera on their phone, okay, which is gonna show the real room, the real wall, where the art will potentially go, and then it takes your piece in augmented reality and it projects it onto the wall, and you're able to move it around with your finger, you're able to size it up, size it down, take screenshots, and so is it gonna look great in the room? What size do I need to get, right? And so, again, this is attempting to solve for the visual friction of, I don't know if it's gonna work in my room, I don't know what it's gonna look like, right? It's just getting them one step closer to a buying decision, removing the friction from the process. And, you know, 
I've been doing e-commerce marketing, digital marketing my entire life. Everyone loves to gravitate towards the wall preview or the live preview with AR. But the reality is when you do this for any period of time, it's not about one individual feature. It's about all the features working in conjunction and you never know which one's gonna end up, you know, if we think of a sports analogy, like a basketball team, it's how many players you have on the court that can contribute, right, to eventually scoring that basket. And so it's why we do the demo process. We have literally hundreds and hundreds of features all to remove the friction, all to help you get better at selling art and photography online. And when you when you request one of these things, uh, our outreach team will reach out, have a conversation with you and schedule it. It goes like an hour and 10 minutes and we just go through feature after feature after feature. So it's not about any one of them, it's about all of them working in conjunction. Um, independent of that, let's keep working down the page. So we also have a ton of backend software. It turns out running an art business, art photography business, there's a ton of individual little nuance and things that, that can slow you down, okay? Things like uploading an image and how many images do you have to upload to your web page for all the various different media sizes and types you have. It's very helpful to be able to just upload one, have all the sizes auto-populate for you and tell you exactly what you can sell. Uh, things like markups, how do you set markups? Can you do it globally? Can you do it per media type, right? And so no one likes to talk about the back end features, but we have a slew of those as well. All uh, there to make your life easier, to give you time back, okay? Um, let's talk about our fulfillment. And I, w we love talking about this. This is in our, our company DNA pretty significantly, but I'll pull up a website. So we're on Bill Stidham's site. Um, or I should probably start here, actually. So we are integrated. Well, let me start here. You can have it any which way you like. If you're an artist that just does originals and you get orders, obviously you're going to be responsible for fulfilling the originals because you have them. Uh, if you're an artist that has a local printer or a photographer that has a local printer, you really like using your printer, you can use your printer. The orders come in, you send the order to your printer. We call that self-fulfillment, no problem. What we recommend our customers do, though, is integrate with one of our print partners, and I'll get into the reasons why. But we've got graphic dimensions on the East Coast. We've got Bay Photo on the West Coast. We've got Print Partner for our customers in Canada. And then we just recently integrated with a company called Guten that handles the merchandise, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, how does it work? You sign up, you get your, your site set up, which usually takes 14 days or less. You click a button that says, I want to integrate with this print partner. An order comes into the website, the printer gets paid, you get paid, the order gets printed, the order gets boxed, your logo goes on the side of the box, boom, it shifts to the customer, you touch absolutely nothing. There's nothing you have to touch, nothing you have to do, all happens automatically. And again, it's to give you back that amount of time. And, you know, no one has time in today's day and age to be dealing with the admin, okay? Any time that you spend on the admin, by which I mean sending the order to your local printer, uh, uh, checking on the proof, uh, uh, sending tracking numbers, did it ship, any of that correspondence, all of that, if you're spending your time on that, is time you are not spending on your biggest problem, which is your marketing. So we really believe like streamlining sort of this drop shipping, print on demand, automated fulfillment is a very, very wise decision if you wanna create successful artists and photographers. Now just recently, um, this was probably what, like a month before Christmas maybe, we integrated with a company called Guten and what it allows our customers to do is sell merchandise of a myriad of different kinds. You know, uh, hoodies, uh, iPhone cases, tank tops, um, you know, they can come in, adjust the image exactly how they want to see it. Maybe they want to tilt it depending on what case it is and get iPhone cases and, you know, a number of different other items. Um, we've got throw pillows and uh, I clicked out of it and coffee mugs. And we're adding more and more and more and more of these. And on the subject of merch, we realize, again, if you go back to our original mission, why we exist, you know, we want we need to create a set of circumstances, a set of conditions such that the artist, the photographer can make and grow as successful a business as they want. And so some artists look at this merch and they're like, they turn their noses up at it. And like, that's not fine art. Why would I ever want to do that? Some are like, I'm all in. I love it. We don't care. Our job is to provide as many different opportunities for artists and photographers to be successful as possible. And we've been totally blown away by how much of this stuff actually, believe it or not, sells. Um, and some of it is higher margin than you would think. Like a throw pillow is $44, and what does a tote bag cost? I think a tote bag costs $38. So sell it or not, you have every opportunity imaginable available to you. If you want to have it all, and kind of like Bill does here on his site, where you know you have your fine art 
uh, uh, media types across the top and then you have the merch all in one product page, great. If you wanna have individual items in the store, you wanna have your artwork fine and then you just wanna have a line of phone cases. Uh, if you wanna have one for a couple of weeks and then turn it off, you can do any and all of that and it's one click to turn it on at any point in time. It's automated, it's completely automated in terms of the fulfillment and, and that's not gonna change. And we realize again, like artists and photographers are essentially just creators. Right? You're just creators and you have a talent. You have a talent with a brush or you have a talent with the lens. You want to monetize that talent. Okay. So again, our job is to give you as many different opportunities to be able to monetize that talent as possible. So that's how we that's how we go about it. And you know, again, it's a debate about when to use it or when not. But somebody on one of these um, sessions earlier was like, you know who's the greatest rock band of all time? I was like, no, who? He's like, the Rolling Stones. He goes, guess what the Rolling Stones have at their concerts? I said, what? a giant booth for merch. He's like, they sell hundreds of thousands of dollars of it a year. If the stones sell it, I'll sell it. So anyway, I thought that, that kind of stuck with me. It was fun. So that's our, our print fulfillment. Um, and, and I should say too that we're adding calendars and we're adding puzzles and we are adding photo books. And to be honest with you, if they come out with a line of hot air balloons, we'll add hot air balloons too, right? Because again, it's creating a set of circumstances such that the artist and photographer can be successful. We don't care where the success comes from. I don't care if Brian gets into business and he's the, the number one iPhone selling case guy of the entire United States. He's got a successful business, right? So not for us to decide. Um, support. We believe we have best in class support. If you took a look at our Facebook ads and you scrolled through the 350 of them, you'll see more positive responses for the support than just about anything else. We're very, very good at this. Yes, it's in all the venues you think it is, email, phone, chat support. But in addition to that, kind of what I'm most proud about is we run six days a week, including Saturdays, Zoom sessions, just like the one you're on right now, okay? And you can pop into one at any point in time with any support-related issue and get fixed, get unstuck. There's screen shares. They can take over control of your computer and just get you sorted, uh, get you sorted instantaneously. So we're very, very good at it. Not only do we support our application, we ask, we, we, we ask you guys, we teach you guys marketing all year long, which I'll get into in a second. What if you're having a problem with Facebook or with Instagram or with MailChimp or with your Facebook ads? We actually support that too. You can pop into a Zoom session and say, hey, Patrick, I'm stuck on my Facebook ads. I'm getting this message. Can you help me? And our team will get you unstuck. That's an amazing thing. There's not many companies that do that. So I'm very, very proud about that. Um, that's in terms of the overall website picture. And we essentially do all of that, okay, to give you your time back such that you can work on the biggest problem that every single solitary person on this Zoom call has, which is their marketing problem. You need to get better at it. And let me tell you, I've got 4,700 customers, and there is only one universal truth about every one of them, right? Every niche imaginable, every subject matter, all over this country and others, every one of them has a marketing problem. The person that just passed $500,000 a year in sales has a marketing problem. They wanna grow that business, they have a marketing problem. The person that just is getting started, sold their first piece, they have a marketing problem and everybody in between, right? It is the biggest problem. And so, you know, we wanna create successful customers. We realize we need to teach artists and photographers how to market. And so how did we solve for that particular problem? We created collectively what might as well be called the art business university. That's how we look at it because I'm not sure there's a better term to explain it. One, we have the best digital education that exists in terms of selling art and photography online, full stop. I'm, I'm hang my hat on this. We have detailed documentation that we call playbooks on every marketing facet of imaginable. How to run an email campaign, how to run a Black Friday sale, how to go live on Instagram, how to go live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time, how to go live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time with your laptop on a cell phone. Detailed, step-by-step, -step, audio, video, screenshot documentation. If we're asking you to send emails, we will give you the email copy. You just adjust it to taste for what you're doing. So the playbooks are incredible. They're very robust and they're very focused on teaching you how to market. We pair that with a 365 day a year marketing calendar, okay? It has on it beginner, intermediate, and advanced. You take on what you can take on. You're never not knowing what you need to be doing on a week in, week out basis. You start doing, you, first, you're overwhelmed. You're like, this is, I've never done this. This is crazy. How am I gonna survive? And then you fight through it. And you, and you got through the beginner level, and then you take on the intermediate, and then you take on the advanced. The majority of our customers follow this doggone near verbatim year in, year out, because it works, it's effective. Not only does it tell you what to do, but it solves for one of the greatest 
the other greatest pandemic of our lifetime, the shiny object syndrome, okay? Not only does the calendar tell you what to do, it tells you what not to do, okay? What not to be spending your time on, right? And how do I know this? One, I'm very good at digital marketing. Two, we have 4,700 customers and I get to see all of their data. I can tell everyone on this call conclusively out of the 4,700 customers that I have, I have not seen anyone turn a positive ROI out of marketing on Pinterest. No one is making any money from marketing on Pinterest. So I'm going to tell you, you don't have to worry about Pinterest. I see you laughing, Mary. I do not want you spending any time on Pinterest, period. Waste of time. So too with SEO, okay? So the, the calendar is equally powerful on what you need to focus on is what you ignore, okay? It's what you ignore, and that's a big deal. Number three of the Art Business University is what we call office hours, okay? We take the entire customer base, we split it into three. Until you sell, until you sell $2,000 directly on your website, you're in the traction group. Uh, and after you sold $2,000 on your website, you're in the ramping group. After you sold a much higher revenue threshold that we don't publish, you get in the advanced group, which we call growth. We hold week in, week out, every single solitary week, and we took one week off for New Year's, but essentially 48, 49 weeks a year. Uh, Zoom calls like this. You come on on a weekly basis. There are, it's either me or members of my team. We go over the playbooks. We go over the calendars. We talk about wins. Uh, how it's, Somebody landed an interior decorator and sold $35,000 worth. They're going to come on and tell their story. Not only are they going to come on and tell their story, they're going to say, here's the email that did it. Here's the copy. Here's the Facebook post. And you can go and look at that stuff, right? And you're learning in concert with your peers. Digital online education is not enough, okay? If you look at the stats out there, I don't care who it is, Kajabi or Masterclass or lynda.com, 30% of the people that buy those courses actually finish them. So we can't just have digital education. We have to have in-person teaching sessions and everyone knows how to Zoom now. It's our new reality. So those sessions, which we started like, I think two weeks, three weeks ahead of the pandemic, have been the single solitary biggest fundamental change to our business we've ever had. If before the pandemic, I had 100 customers, and I told those 100 customers via email, guys, Black Friday's coming. You got to get going on your sale. Here's the playbook, right? And then I recorded a podcast episode, and I was like, we're going to do this. 35 out of the 100 would take action. After these video sessions where I'm able to go through things, people are able to ask their questions, raise their hands, get unstuck, learn your peers, I have 75 people taking action on that sale, and it's fundamentally changing the business. It is making our customers more successful uh, uh, more accountable, actually staying focused. Like, look, you guys are all solopreneurs for the most part. I mean, we could pull this entire group and not a lot of you guys have a big team. You don't have an office behind you where you're yelling at an intern to help you out. You are a solopreneur, okay? You, you know, myself, the CEO, we've been entrepreneurs our entire life. I know it's a roller coaster. I know there's highs and the lows. When you're on those lows, you need to kick in the pants, right? You need to be lifted up sometimes. And that's what these Zoom sessions do too, which is incredible. We follow it up with a Facebook group that is highly curated, okay? Uh, uh, there's no trolls, there's no nonsense in there, right? You've seen some of the other groups out there online and how ridiculous it gets in those things. And artists are sharing with other artists, photographers are sharing with other photographers, the people that are in the landscape niche are talking to others in the landscape niche. Hey guys, what do you think of this new direction? What did you use in terms of pricing? They're publishing their wins. And so sometimes you can't just hear it from us, the official company mouthpiece. And so it's nice to have a whole bunch of people that are doing the same journey at the same time um, helping each other out, sharing, what are you doing here? What are you doing there? So that collectively is the art business university. And it's, it's like a college. It, I mean, it really is. And the difference is you pay your tuition, you come in and there's no graduates because the learning never stops. Right. And, you know, in addition to that, it, it never will stop in today's digital marketing landscape. The goalposts are just constantly moving, right? Like so quickly, you feel like you just learned something and it moves over here. So we keep you up to date with all of that. As a final, about six months ago, or maybe five months ago now, we started an in-house marketing agency. And it's an in-house marketing agency that only does one thing. It helps artists and photographers sell more art online and off. And we believe already, as of current today's date, it's the biggest, it's the biggest soul-focused art and photography marketing agency in the world. And that's not hyperbole. I've been asking on these calls, can someone name me an agency that specializes only in helping artists and photographers sell their work? I haven't found one. No one's ever put one in the chat for me, especially not a big one. Why? Because my aforementioned point, selling art and photography is not like selling swim fins or ladies' handbags or scooters. It's hard, right? It's really hard. Uh, and we're good at it because we've been working at it for a long time. Also, you know, I, I get upset, right? Because I look at all of you guys as like, 
you own a McDonald's, right? And if you owned a McDonald's, you have to know how to do the ordering. You have to know how to clean the floors. You have to know how to open the building. You have to know how to operate the drive through window. You have to be able to flip burgers and fries and do all of that and do the ordering, right? Like it's your business. You need to understand those things. But at the same time, I'm not naive in the sense that 80% of our customers still have full-time jobs or in some capacity. Maybe they're service-based photographers and they're trying to sell their fine art. So I get it. You need, you need to be able to have the ability. If you don't have the time to do the marketing and you have the resources, you need a la carte things that you can jump off the shelf. Hey guys, I need my Instagram profile tuned up. I need my Facebook page tuned up. I need to help with a sales campaign. You need to be able to do that sometimes. In addition to things like, we'll completely build your website for you. You don't want to do that. You hate building websites. Uh, your fears in life, in order, are death, taxes, and building another website. I get that. I get that, right? So you can drop your images in a folder. Tell us to build the site. We'll build the site for you, okay? We'll manage your Facebook ads, okay? We will manage all of your social posting. And again, it goes back to the top premise. Like, our job is to create successful customers. And so we looked at it six months ago, and it's like, we need to have an agency. And then some people are like, well, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I, I want to do it myself. Fantastic. Our job is to have the best DIY product, do it yourself, learn, come on the sessions, and then also have an agency where you can pay. And again, it's all a cart or it's, you know, up, up to almost full service. And the, the amazing thing about it is, you know, I've been doing marketing a long time, right? What do all marketers love? A case study. Oh, we love a case study, right? With the sexy data about this huge win and we publish it on social media and we use it for lead generation. So totally did that all the time, okay? Guilty, guilty, you know? And if, if, if you lose, you don't publish it, right? You wait till you hit a winner and, and do all that. But it used to be I would go and run a case study with a customer and, you know, I'd have limited bandwidth to do that and then we would build the playbooks. Well, guess what I have now? I've got agency staff. I've got one guy that all he does all day long is spruce up Instagram pages for artists and photographers. He's done, he did 65 of them last week or you know, 65 last month. So imagine the learnings that we're getting. What happens is the learnings are going right back into the playbooks and then they're coming on to the Zoom sessions and they're teaching and we've got a little flywheel going on, right? We've got a little artist and photographer education flywheel. So it doesn't matter if you ever order a single solitary service from the agency. And we don't even care if the agency ever makes any money, in all honesty, because all it does is just improves the product, makes more successful customers, uh, and helps us grow. So we really, at the end of the day, are fundamentally a business that can be thought of as a rowboat, right? Um, it takes our oar, your oar, we jump in the boat in the same time, and if we can get that thing rowing in the same direction, the faster we can get that going, the better everybody does. So that's Art Storefronts in a nutshell. Uh, that's my presentation. All right, um, <clears throat> I've been sort of ranting all week long because, and I'll screen share so I can show this. Hold on, I gotta remember to do it on both things. So it turns out there's like two companies that do this re this reporting. Okay, both you guys can see it. And so one is called the Hiscox, which is like a, it's an insurance agency out of London that puts out a report similar to this one. This one is sponsored by Art Basel and UBS. And it's the Art Market 2021, right? And you know, despite the fact that they're sort of at the at the at the top of the of the ecosystem, if you will, I mean like all the hoity toity, like, you know, best artists in the world. Kind of the the analogy I use is, you know, if if all of you guys played soccer, their survey is really just like the professional athletes, like the top of the top of the top, right? But it's a really interesting report and I just I want to go over the table of contents and I'm gonna send it send you the link after the fact. I want you guys to read it. But you can see the global art market in 2020, dealer sales, auction sales, art fairs, online sales, global wealth and collector perspectives, uh, economic impact and conclusions. And it's it's super interesting, right? Like we're we're in an industry and and I'll send I'll put this link in too. I'll put it in the chat right now. Hold on. Um if, if you don't want to like read the whole report, they have this like fancy little web page thing that they did that has the key findings in it which I think is pretty interesting. Like it's, you know, auction sales, dealer sales, and they've got like nice little, uh, the, the online sales is super fascinating. So they got like these nice little, you know, graphics and everything else, like despite the contraction of sales overall. Um, so r a really cool thing to look at after the fact. But one of the things that I was sort of struck with um, as I was reading through this thing, and I'll stop the screen share, is as crazy of a year uh, uh, as last year was, you know, whether you were one of the professional athletes at the top of the game or whether you're just getting started, you know, everybody's entire world was turned upside down, right? By COVID, by the pandemic, the most extraordinary thing any of us have ever lived through. But it was actually a really, really good thing for the art and photography markets. One, you know, you had 
an explosion in sales of pretty much everything home decor related. And that one's easy, that one's documented. Everybody knows that, right? Like not going into work, stuck at home. Uh, you wanted to make your home nicer. Art and photography rode a huge wave with that, just like all the home decor, anything home, everything exploded, right, the last year. But the other really interesting thing about it is it opened up an entirely brand new venue in which you could sell your art or photography. And the underlying technology existed pre-pandemic. It was there, but no one was really utilizing it, okay? And anyone that's seen any one of these things before, I always do this, but it's important. Venue number one for selling art or photography, the best way to sell art or photography, face-to-face, -face, in person, okay? That's never gonna change. The problem uh, 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 is that we are all geographically fixed on this planet. Uh, the fact that we have to sleep, uh, the fact that we can't have 25 concurrent conversations at once. So yes, we have to have a website. And that's just another venue in which you can potentially sell your art or photography directly from your website, right? Works when you're asleep, works at all times, can do all these amazing things. The third, which is just the newly reopened or, or, or the newly opened venue is selling your art or photography via live video direct, okay? Directly uh, to, uh, and thank you Juan, I got it, I'm, I'm recording it now. D directly to folks via video, okay? And just like the Zoom session that we're on now, and it can be one-to-one, -one, meaning let's say I visit Ronald's website and I'm like, Ronald, that crazy old computer monitor, you're scanning film, let me take a look at your images. And Ronald's like, sure, let's do a Zoom session and I'll walk you through some of my greatest pieces and we can talk about it one-to-one, -one, right? Or what we're doing here, one-to-many. And it, 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 it is so insanely effective, so amazing what it can do. It is absolutely the future. Uh, uh, everyone is scrambling to try and figure it out right now. And the thing that I love more than anything else is we have a hell of a head start on all of them because we've been so heavily into this since March. But I, you know, I, I bring up that, that Art Basel UBS thing because it talks about how um, they even have a snooty term for it in the, uh, what is it, I, gotta, I, gotta, I love making fun of these people. So, um, you know, they're somewhat self-indulgent. What we're all on right now, us, right? What is this? A Zoom call. We call them Zoom, Zoom calls mostly, right? Like face-to-face, -face, we're talking to it. What do the snooty art people call it? An OVR, an OVR, an online viewing room. Would you like to come to my online viewing room and, and peruse my art? Mm -hmm. I'll see you at the country club after. The, 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 the larger point I'm making is this pandemic, as a result of completely snatching away all offline revenue sources overnight, has forced some incredible innovation. And the innovation is taking place in how you leverage live video to sell one-to-one -one and how you leverage live video to sell one-to-many. I saw the writing on the wall uh, with this trend a little bit before the pandemic happened. And, you know, we went all in on it and we really started learning and I'll do the, I'll do the screen share. And this is where I get to do my little case study and brag a little bit about numbers, but I, I, I do so not to toot our own horn, but I do so because I want you guys to be aware of how in insane of, of, uh, of a thing this is. So one of the things that I, that I show all the time is this is a live art show, okay? This is a one-to-many video uh, uh, selling opportunity. And this is a customer, a friend of mine, and he's using software to stream this to Facebook, to YouTube, and to his business Facebook page. You can see he's got AirPods in his ears, and there's a phone sat there, and the phone is streaming to Instagram. So this, was, this is in his basement studio in, in, in Laval in Canada. And these were some old pieces, and he had a live art show doing it this way. And you can see that, yes, we've got some motion graphics and everything else, but it's him selling to a bunch of different people uh, directly via live video show. So I think I ran, man, three or four with him. And don't worry, I'll send you links to these things after the fact so you guys can, you can watch them on your own. I think I ran like three or four with him, different ones. Um, and he was just clearing out old work in his case, right? Like old pieces that he had in his basement forever uh, that don't even represent his new style, totally weird stuff like this. Um, and he sold 60 pieces for over 32,000 Canadian um, in 15 days doing it, okay? So immensely successful, incredibly successful way of selling art that it was totally new, totally not available normally. And just this last week, 
did another one um, because I wanted to test the thing and see if it was going to work again. And, you know, here's another one of these things in, in, in her little basement studio. No, no fancy, crazy setup or anything else. Uh, holding up pieces, talking about them. She sold 62 pieces, I think, or, or last count, 63 pieces in the last like uh, uh, 48 hours with one week's worth of promotion. So it's absolutely staggering what you can do, what you can achieve. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll go as a final on, you know, um, Matthews here. He, he, during the height of COVID, even had, um, he was lucky enough to have an art show that he was able to get away with, like an actual gallery show. And it was in, God, where was it? I can't even remember, Montreal maybe. And, you know, people had to wear masks and everything else. And the, the we, we ran the live art show of the work actually hung in the gallery, you know, like they would have the normal gallery open and, 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 and this was incredibly successful too. And so why, why am I telling you all this? Because I think it's the single solitary biggest breakthrough in, in how art and photography can and will be sold. And, you know, you read that report, that, that, that UBS um, Art Basel report, and all those guys are trying to figure it out too, right? Like all the individual auction houses are now having this OVR situation, right? Um, that, that come in, have an online viewing room where you can view the various different pieces. The report talks about the stats of how many high net worth individuals bought pieces, collected pieces via live video. Uh, if you look at all the art fairs and art shows that were canceled that people are used to going to, uh, what do you notice? They all tried to put together online uh, massive sessions so they wouldn't lose the, bit, the booth fees and still try to keep it going. Now, most of them failed miserably, which was not from a lack of execution. It, it, it's just, it, it's, it's really new technology. It's really hard to master. Um, you know, it, like how do you handle video streaming? Like how do you figure this all out? It's hard. The whole world's trying to figure it all out at once. My contention is it is going to utterly, totally, and completely change the game. And, you know, that the last one I showed you, um, Meg, who's a customer, we were sort of, we were having like a, you know, a post-mortem, if you like, talking about, okay, how did this go? Um, what did you learn? What did we do? And, you know, trying to figure it out. Because one of the things that we do is we, we come up with these ideas, these marketing efforts, initiatives, we go and we run them. And then we create a step-by-step -step guide such that others can run them. So that's what we're doing with this one. And she's just, you know, Meg, the, the artist's name is Meg. She's one of the things she said was like, I'm just so blown away, right? Like I used to have to load my car up with all of these pieces and pay the booth fees and then go sit eight hours a day on my feet in the booth and stay in some hotel and eat crappy food and then load my car back up and then drive home exhausted, all of that. And now without even leaving your house, you're capable of reaching just as many people. And better still, you're not geograph geographically limited to the tiny little area you're in. You know, you're, you're reaching people across the United States, in many cases across the world, and it is a totally effective way to sell, you know, sell art. And when you, when you couple the fact that no booth fees, selling direct, you keep 100% of the revenue, uh, 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 there's no 50-50 split with anyone else. Uh, you're not leaving your house. Uh, uh, the cost of running it you've already paid for, which is, your internet connection, it is a pretty staggering thing, right? And, and sort of the takeaway is like, you have capabilities, okay, with, with very cheap video equipment, a camera, your phone, ear pods, whatever, of, of truly having a retail art gallery that instead of open Main Street in your town, it's open on Main Street of the interwebs. And all you have to do is just open it up and have a conversation. And we sit there and we talk about like, you know, everyone's dream, the fallacy that artists fall for, uh, that all of us fall for is that we're going to just magically put everything up on our website. All the work's going to be there. You're going to get a snazzy website from us even. We're going to give you this best in class website. It's going to be incredible. And you're not going to have to talk to anybody. Everyone's just going to come to your website and buy, right? Like when you think about it, when you think about it, what, it, what is the best way to sell art? Okay. In person, face to face. The reason this video works so well is because it's the next closest thing. You know what's the furthest thing from it? Your website. Your website is just basically like, hey, that's a store where there's no one, near, no one there to help me whatsoever, and I'm just supposed to wander around and figure things out by myself, or a face-to-face -face video conversation with somebody. It's a staggering thing to think about. Um, I really do believe it's going to forever change, not just, not, not just commerce or art and photography, of which it is just, oh my God, does it work so well, but for everything, literally just about everything. Um, you know, you could, like a clothing store, right? Call up, 
send them your sizes. You go into a Zoom session. They're sitting there holding the outfits for you. Do you like this one? I think this one would work well. Do you like this one? Okay, great. What, do you have a question about that one? Okay, great. They put them in a box. They ship them to you. You keep the ones you like. You send the rest back. Like, it's going to fundamentally change the way we do everything. So that's my Friday rant. I feel like it was a little long-winded, but I'm fired up about this. And, and, and the results are just so promising. So we'll get into the Q&A. Um, if your camera's on, you can do the old school uh, uh, hand raise if you have a question. I'll see that. Uh, members of my team will see that. And then I'll unmute you. You come on. Um, you can ask whatever question you want. There's like a little participants button at the bottom of the Zoom window, though. If you click on that, uh, there's a way to digitally raise your hand. That kind of forms a queue if you have questions. Uh, and, and, and then I can just kind of work down the queue and answer them that way. Um, I see the questions in the chat. I will get to those too. I, I kind of like to prioritize the uh, the hands and the people that are ready to go right away. And then, yeah, it can be about anything. Um, anything that we do, uh, 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 questions about what you're doing, digital marketing, how, how you are selling pricing, commissions, limited editions, niche selection, uh, uh, just about anything. Love to, love to, love to talk about it. And once you've got your cameras on, so if I don't get any questions, I want to start I'm going to start picking and, and, and poking and prodding. See, there we go, Stephen. Just needed so I just needed someone to break the ice. Appreciate you stepping up. Um, you'll have to hit them. Yeah, gotcha. I just did, but it was a great presentation, and some of the questions were answered. Wonderful. But what I was telling Matt when I talked to him earlier, mm -hmm. I've known about you for a few years and just okay. haven't really done anything. Mm -hmm. I'm on three different uh, websites, I guess you could yeah. say. Yeah. And have some sales and i guess the question is and i you may have have uh addressed it but so suppose there's uh, uh joe toland in uh, east west north uh iowa city mm -hmm. and so how how do i get him to see my art in other words he doesn't know he wants something of mine mm -hmm. but he might if he sees it because and, and that's i i have a few hundred uh facebook book and uh, uh, Instagram followers, but it's all like uh, self uh, clapping on the back. Yeah, nobody really buys. Yeah, uh, that way, because they're all you know, they're all artist friends, they say, Hey, great work, Gary. Yeah, really nice piece. And then, you know, on to the next swipe left. Yeah, stated that's stated that's another way, there's no button on the ATM machine that says likes, comments or shares, right? Right, yeah. right. Show me the money. Yeah. So and then when when someone does reach out that I have never met that sees my sees my work and they inquire and I quote them a price and they say, oh, I didn't realize it was that much. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm not going to give it away. And my wife says, well, they only want to pay 50 bucks. So, yeah. Yep. Being sarcastic. No, I know. I, know, I trust me. I, I mean, there's nothing new under the sun on these anymore. It stopped being new Obviously, a while ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, 100% of the people on this call have the same problem. Every single solitary one of you has a marketing problem. Full stop. That's it. We live in a, we live in a world in which the commodity is attention. With it, you can do anything. Without it, you get a bunch of likes, and comments, and shares, and no sales, right? So... Essentially, what we do really more than provide a website or anything else is we teach artists and photographers how to market themselves. And is, is, is it an incredible set of circumstances such that you can have a website with your art on it? You can be running these live shows. You can be selling direct and keeping all the money. Phenomenal. Incredible. The fact that you guys can create things essentially out of thin air. You don't have to send, send over to China for an injection molding. You're like little inventors. Incredible. Uh, does that mean... The marketing doesn't have to be done and it's hard work doing it. You, no, you have to do the marketing, right? So that's what we teach you to do. So how would I teach you to get that guy in Northeast, West, South Iowa? Marketing, right? You have to be capturing emails. You have to be emailing those emails on a regular basis. Yes, you have to be posting on the socials. Uh, I don't love the socials either, but they have the attention and we can't afford to be uh, uh, contrarian about things. Like they have the attention, you have to market there. Uh, you have to run sales. Uh, you have to understand the mechanics of running all those sales. After you sold a couple thousand dollars directly from your website, then we need to get you into Facebook and Instagram ads. Again, they have all the attention. That's what we do. We do this all year long, 52 weeks a year, and we don't ever stop. It's the ball game. That's it. You're like, I know. There's, there's no magical place that I can just upload everything and find that guy. No, there's not. It's, it's marketing. But what are the alternatives right now, right? 
Like, I, you know, th there's a couple of different ways that you could build a robust art of photography business. Back in the day, you could, you could absolutely just, you know, go ahead and give everything you've got to a gallery. The gallery is going to do the 50-50 split. They're handling all the marketing for you. As a result of that, they're giving you 50%. As a result of that, they're not giving you the data on your collectors, which is the biggest disaster. If you're, if you're trying to make it as an artist or photographer and you're not retaining your customer data, it is, it's like it, your boat has holes in it, right? And you're gonna spend as much time bailing the water out of your boat as you are growing the business itself. You know, I go back to that, um, I go back to that, the, the video I showed earlier of Meg and I've been doing this a while now, right? I've been doing this for like six years at Art Storefronts, years years earlier. And so, especially recently, like I've got some reps and sets in and you know, you, you start your career out and you read something that's really wise, right? And you're like, okay, I'm gonna adopt that because that's really wise. And then you're at it for long enough such that you're like, oh my God, this is even more profound, more profound, more profound. I stole it from this guy's book, okay? Wyland, the whale guy. Don't be a starving artist. I cite this all the time, I love it. But he talks about how one of the most important aspects of his business are what he calls his collectors, right? His collectors. And his collectors are people that buy seven plus pieces a lifetime of his art, right? And Wyland has never done anything but sell direct. And so he's retained all of his collector data his entire life. And it is the single solitary most important thing uh, that you could potentially have. And I'd go back to that, that gal, Meg. So we ran that sale with her, that live video sale. There were 70 pieces, okay? She announced the sale on Monday, said it was going to be a live show that was going to go down on Wednesday. On Tuesday, she emailed her collectors and said, hey, collectors, you know, I appreciate you guys so much for supporting me throughout the years. I just want to let you know that I'm having this special sale because you guys are collectors. You guys get first look, first crack at all of the works. She sold 34 of the 70 works before the sale even started, right? And, you know, I look at that and I'm just, I'm so bowled away by the, the collector thing. But how did she have the collector list in the first place? Marketing and selling direct for years and years. That's it. So on that, on those uh, web sales, mm -hmm. was it her uh, list or did, you, did she do some advertising to bring in new people who don't normally follow her? That was her list, her, her warm traffic. I mean, w you know, there's, there's, there's ways that you market it and you get, some, you get some new people that are along for the ride. But yeah, by and large, it was her list for sure. There's no shortcut to the marketing, Gary, is what I'm saying. I mean, uh, Steven is what I'm saying, and, it, and, and, yeah. and you, you have to do it, right? You have to do it. But there's, there's, there's some reasons why you should do it. Uh, you know, you guys don't run, you guys don't, artists and photographers, I'm saying, don't normally have midlife crises, you know, where you're like a, you're a tax attorney, and then you're like 35, 36, and you're like, I can't live my life like this, and you go do, do a construction job for the rest of your life. Uh -uh. You guys are artists and photographers for the rest of your life. You're going to be selling your work for the next 20, 30, 40, God willing, 50 years. If that's the case, it, 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 it makes a ton of sense to get started in earnest uh, uh, on your marketing. The first year is the hardest year. It sucks, but you learn, you grow. The email list goes from zero to 150. A couple months down the line, it's at 550, 650, 750. You're picking up steam. By year three, you know, you, if, depending on your work, you could potentially be knocking on the door of a six figure year business. But how else are you going to do it? How else are you going to do it, right? The gallery model it does not work for most. Uh, 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 it, it, it also is so exploitative and you don't build collectors. The online marketplaces work for so few. Anything that's easy to do by definition, all the arbitrage has already been sucked out of it, right? So, you know, I love the local fair and show circuit. I think it's fantastic. I think it's fantastic for lead generation. I can't wait till it comes back online. But, you know, even the odds of the show and fair circuit, okay, at best, you need those things at 100% capacity to stand a great chance at making any money. People are gun shy right now, right? They're going to be gun shy for a while. And, you know, those that model doesn't pencil at 30, 40, 50, 60% occupancy. It just doesn't. It needs to be 100%. So, I don't know. I feel like I'm really ranting on a Friday. Sorry if I'm going long-winded on you, Stephen. It's all good. Yeah. Got to market. You got to start marketing. It's going to suck at first. It's going to be annoying. Right, you have a whole bunch of stuff to learn, but once you once you develop the marketing muscles and you get going, it 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 gets easier. You get momentum, you get rolling, and you know, again, like I, I love the shows and fairs, right? Like we always talk about the shows and fairs, and I'll, and I'll finish with this one, and then I'll go into the next questions. You know, I talk to literally hundreds of you guys a week, right? And it breaks my heart because there's a lot of people that are like, let's just say your age, you're at the top of your career right now, right? 
Like you cut your teeth years ago. Your work is fantastic, right? You have an angle, an element, uh, a, a body of work that represents like a significant level of talent. The problem is, let's just say you were going to all those fairs and shows and circuits and everything else. You weren't capturing emails the whole time though, were you? Had you been, had I taught you how to do it, how to get the most ROI out of a show, you'd had a fish scroll outside of the booth. You would have said, put in your business card, put your email on this list for the opportunity to wear, win a free print. Each show, you would capture between 20, 30, 40, 50, 150, 250 emails, 500 on a good one. After the show ends, you would email that entire list and say, hey, I picked a winner. It was Lucy. Lucy's the winner for today. Uh, uh, so sorry the rest of you guys didn't win. Just want to let you know, uh, for the next 48 hours, uh, uh, it's going to be 25% off for anything in my store, right? If you would have done that for every show or fair or circuit you were at over a five-year period, you would add a huge list, right? And the pandemic would have hit. And your store would have been open. Your sales channels would have been open. You wouldn't. You wouldn't have skipped a beat. So, that's that's that's, that's sort of my whole rant. That's my that's my uh, this is my newsletter list right here, and that's all I got. So. Hey, you know what? It's a lot better than blank. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a lot better than blank. So, mm. we can teach you. We can teach you if you're willing to do the work. We'll teach you to market. Any other questions, Stephen? Why got your got you on? No, I, I appreciate. Yeah, I mean, it, it. You know, it's it it it. It's like sometimes I feel like an idiot giving you advice. Like it's you know, it's like oh man, like you know. And 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 I know I've got other questions, so I won't make that that rant so long. But you know, I was I was talking to a she's a customer and she's like sixty five and she's just like Patrick. I just don't want to learn this technology, right? Like I hate it. I hate the social media. I hate the website. I don't want to do any of it. What can I do? And it's like, what can you do? What else can you do right now for the next couple of years if you want to make it as an artist or photographer? Like, where are the markets, the available markets for you to sell your art and w w without being able to go to the shows and fairs? And she's like, you know, I, I don't even want to sit in the booth anymore. My husband's got health issues. I really can't leave the house. And I listen to all that. And it's just like, you, th there's, no other, there's no other way. You got to get attention. And it's, and, it, and it's marketing. That's sort of just the reality that we're in right now. Um, Okay, Juan, who did you tell me to take next? I know there's a hierarchy and I'm in a ranty mood today. Lloyd, okay. Hold on, Lloyd, I'm gonna get you L-O-Y-D. And then Aston, mute. Okay, Lloyd, hit, hit your mic icon. Yep, gotcha. Hey, nice to meet you. Yeah, ditto. My first time joining you guys. Oh, cool. Um, uh, my question's kind of twofold. Um, okay. My wife is the actual photographer. Okay. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know it yet though. Um, she's not convinced that we need this sort of program. I'm trying mm -hmm. to convince her. Uh, I'm curious. How, well, let, let, before we even get into that, how, how, are, how is she attempting to sell it now? She's not. She's not at That's all. Got it. Thing. Got it. She's a salon owner. She's mm -hmm. an amazing hair colorist. Mm -hmm. She flies back and forth between Chicago and Southern Cal. Okay. And her business has been 80% reduced for the last year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Year, year, Sorry, and, a, year and a quarter. Yeah. Uh, it's killing her. And she's working extra hard trying to make up the difference. And I'm like, look, you know, just through your social media, people go crazy for your photography. Mm -hmm. Why don't you look into this? And that's how I found you guys. I was Google searching for you. Mm -hmm. But my question is, she she's not a techie. She doesn't like any of this. Yeah. She, she doesn't want it, like you were just saying. Um, she barely knows how to do the social medias. And that's because it's all done on the cell phone. Yeah. Um, how many, how, a, how, many follow, how many followers on Instagram, just out of curiosity? I don't know the answer to that. I know it's several hundred or more, but okay. um, not not tens of thousands. Yeah. What but, what what's um, what's interesting, and I'm gonna show, I'm gonna tell you exactly what you're gonna do in the short term, and you can decide whether we're good fit long term. You know what I love about that, and especially you know, obviously, if she's flying to Southern California, she's very good, and you know, those women develop seriously intimate relationships with the hair color person, right? Once once they've got that person, they don't trust anyone else. So, I I, I bring that up to say when you have like that great pool of no like and trust, all you have to do is let them know that you're a photographer and, and, and start showing the work a little bit. But if I were her, here's what I would do. And I'll get my little stack so I could do show and tell. What's your wife's name? Regina. Regina. Or in German, it's pronounced Regina. Regina. Pretty sure she's got one of these. Pretty sure she has an Instagram account on one of these. So I'm going to go yeah. live. I'm going to go live on Instagram turn it on and i'm gonna say hey guys uh it's me regina and you know this covid is really sucked 
uh, because I haven't been able to see any of your wonderful faces. But what I have been doing is working on my passion, which is one of my passions, which is photography. So to launch this business, I've gotten all my work printed out and I'm just gonna run a quick flash sale uh, to see if anybody would like some. I mean, I know you guys are on Zoom calls all the time. You need a Zoom background. So here's such and such. Uh, something like this would normally cost $250. i am willing to let it go for $125. You can DM me at any point in time, uh, and, and I'll let it go. Uh, uh, here's a metal print uh, of Posiotano. Uh, I contemplated getting married in this church. Uh, it was incredible. Uh, uh, instead, I had my honeymoon there. Uh, here's uh, the, you know uh, an incredible beach I was on, right? It's it's on canvas. Something like this would normally be three seventy five in a store. And really, guys, what I'm trying to figure out is, should I start a business doing this? Would you hang this on your wall? Um, send me a DM. I take Ven Venmo, PayPal. Uh, you can send me a check if you like, and, and and just go through it, and just go through it. And you know what, you guys, the two of you sit down and say, sweetie, here's what I think your top twenty most uh, most uh, uh, engaging pieces are, and let's just go and try and sell them. If you sell them, then you're on the right track, and your, your hypothesis has now been proven true. What will happen is she will get a rush of endorphins because all of these people have bought her pieces, and that will be enough to help you get her over the line, get going on the website, which it sounds like you would have to build, and most importantly, get going on the marketing, right? Is any of her, is any of the, her stuff hanging in her salon or no? Uh, it is, and then also she's I, giving gifts to some of her high-dollar clients, I, you know, judges and lawyers back in Chicago and mm -hmm. we live here in Southern Cal mm -hmm. and some of our my co-workers where, follow where, where, where in Southern Cal are you just out of curiosity Orange County we live in Laguna Niguel I'm in Newport Beach oh no kidding yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she gave a couple of high dollar clients of hers and mm -hmm. a couple of my high profile co-workers now that her artwork is in their zoom backgrounds for their morning meetings at my company. That's how it starts that's how it starts and right so it's pretty catchy. And they're like, man, I, I lived in this town my whole life. I never saw that cave on the beach before. Yeah. And they're following her to see their own town from their offices at their houses now. Your husband of the year, by the way, for getting on a Zoom call on her behalf because you believe in her. So uh, what I, I guess my question was, is it practical to think that I could run this business for her as she's the artist? I do the the. Yes. Yes. And, and look, the, re the only reason I say that is because husband and wife teams seem to be the only teams that I ever see work, right? Like occasionally somebody will have an assistant and, and, and that'll be okay for a little bit, but not usually. Um, you know, the husband and wife dynamic can totally work. Um, it, it, it has worked in a whole bunch of different situations because you guys are till death do us part anyway. You know, when the going gets tough, you just snap at each other, yell at each other, have a drink, make up, right? Like, so <laughs> all those other <laughs> dynamics are already in play, right? Oh, you're um, then. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, I, I, I totally think it could work. I mean, ultimately the step one, you have to, you, you have to see if the work can sell, right? She needs to put some price tags on that stuff inside the, uh, uh salon. Uh, she needs to have that little live art show that I just said, like, Hey, I'm trying to get this business launched. I'm taking it seriously, making an offer on these things. See if you can move some of the pieces. If you can move some of the pieces, then, you know, her work's good to go and you just got to get into active marketing. That's it. That's it's not anymore. Better. Thank you very much. Yeah. And still, you're the man, husband of the, husband of the year effort there uh, for, for believing in your wife like that. I love it. Okay, Lucy, you're up next, and then I'll go Susan. Is, hey it, there. is it Luke Guy? Right? Is it Luke Guy, Lucy, what? Uh, Lucy, yeah. Lucy, okay. Hey, Lucy. Hey. Um, so, yeah, I just uh, came across your ad on uh, YouTube the other day, actually. The first YouTube ad that ever nice. actually interested me. Yes. Um, so I, I'm um, mainly a photographer doing okay. some kind of – abstract or sort of surrealist photography okay and i'm currently selling uh through fine art america yeah how's that i, how, I created my own domain name too and and how's, know, how's fine art this. america going onesie twosies here and there or all right uh, or? basically so i mean i i'm just getting started essentially i only have a few designs up um okay. you know i made a couple sales to some facebook friends mm -hmm. um but essentially i'm just starting out yeah um and what really interested me is uh in the video i watched you you mentioned um the ar live preview thing yeah um, and so that, that was, that was an idea that I had just had a few days ago of trying to do something like that. Yeah. Um, and I was curious also if you guys have anyone who's doing, um, like Snapchat filters, that style of AR, um, anyone working with you on that? Cause I have, I have some cool ideas along those lines. Yeah, that's, that's super interesting. I mean, I like, um, so Snapchat actually, believe it or not, they've got one for the webcam too, which is pretty cool. It's like a tire, an entire free, yeah. yeah, yeah, that I played around with and used a bunch. Um, 
my kids love it actually yeah. they'll like sit my kids will sit down in my lab and I'll, I'll turn all those things on that would that would that would right. be interesting and i and i and i could foresee in the future where there might be a marketplace for those things um which would be super interesting but but when you're just getting mm-hmm. started lucy what what are what are our, our human brains do is they 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 look for the path of least resistance and, and what you're saying in your mind and believe me i'm not pointing this cannon at you because the cannon has been pointed at me my entire life all i've done is do this exact same thing right which is like sure. oh my gosh if i had this sizzly feature then all these sales would end up happening right it's sort of like mm-hmm. it's sort of like you know if i had a ferrari in my in my driveway i'd be able to to drive around drive around at you know 200 miles an hour doing turns and it's like lucy you won't because you're not a race car driver, right? You need to learn how to be a race car driver. You know how you learn how to be a race car driver? You mark it hard for the next three years. Then the AR right. will become like insanely valuable for you, right? Because, uh, you know, stated another way, you could have the best restaurant, best chef in the world, except your restaurant's in the middle of Death Valley in the summer. There's no one there, right? Like, all you got to worry about is getting people inside the restaurant. So for you, the feature would be cool. It could be cool. It's very helpful for consultative selling, in which, which case mm-hmm. you like... You know, I come to your website and I'm like, yeah, I just don't know, you know, what what size, uh, what wall. And then you're like, Patrick, I have this amazing feature on my website called Live Preview with AR. All you have to do is hold your phone up. It'll show you right on the wall, perfect perspective. It's it's more helpful in that situation to get sales over the line to eliminate objections than it is up front, right? You have a marketing problem. So you're just getting started. Fine Art America is not a bad way to start. Uh, the traction there will be very slow just because there's so much competition on there. It's crazy, right? Um, yeah. So the fact that you, you've got some sales going on on Facebook and Instagram, that's good. That's the right way to start. You got to just keep pounding that front, keep attempting to sell, um, and, 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 you know, try, try a couple of these live art shows like, I, like I'm suggesting. Mass, m- m- massively helpful. Way more important than anything else. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And I love I love I love that you came from the YouTube ad, especially because it's my ugly face going, "Hey artist, hey photographer." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. At least it was a little different though, right? But thank thank you for telling it me. It was, that. yeah. Yeah, it's it's always nice to know when the when the marketing works. I think I was even wearing the same stupid hat now that I think about it. But thank you, Lucy. Um, okay, it's gonna go Susan and then uh, W Curtis. So Susan, you're up next. Hi. Hi. How do, you, how do you say how do you say your last name by the way is it Woas or is it Wo? Woes. Woes? Like your phrase. Oh, I like it. Woes. It's a cool name. Okay. Well, um, how much? Uh, I'm interested in, you know, uh, are there extra costs for like coating? No, no. All of that. Com- all of that is included. All of that is 100 percent included in the whole thing. What about? Are there other costs like added costs after you get S- the sign up? No. Product? So. So th- how I phrase this is like um, the number one problem all artists and photographers have is the marketing, right? And, and, yeah. and I say that again and again. So the, before you can even contemplate spending any additional money on your business in the form of anything, you have to, you have to build up the requisite marketing muscles. And the way, the way that I like to, to analogize it is like you have to be able to do 100 push-ups in one sitting, right? That's really hard to do. That takes a bunch of training to get there. It's no different with the marketing. We have to teach you how to capture emails. And there's a whole bunch of different ways we go about that. We have to teach you to email your your list regularly and what that looks like. We have to get you upping your posting frequency on the socials and we teach you how to do that. How to learn Facebook, how to learn Instagram, how to how, various different things to do there. We need to teach you how to run a sale. And everyone thinks like, oh, I know how to run a sale. Yeah, do you? No, you don't. Because for a sale, you have to tease the sale. And then you announce the sale. And then you need to post all the socials uh, with the same language that's dovetailing with the email, uh, what we call omni-channel marketing. And then what about uh, uh, what to do during the sale to get sales over the line? And then how to extend a sale and how to um, do every do all the capacities in between there uh, uh, and how to end the sale and everything else. There's, there's a bunch of moving pieces. It takes everyone, depending on their own technical acumen, a little bit of time, energy, and effort to get up to speed. Now. Early on, everyone also has a chicken and the egg problem. So the only thing that we have you spend money on is we have some marketing techniques that are creative, let's just say. Okay, They're creative and kind of hacky, and some of them center around you will be doing print giveaways of your work. And so the costs associated with that are just the, the cost of the print and the cost to ship it. Um, it's extremely low. It's usually like 30 or $40 per marketing effort, sometimes 25 
I, and we'll have you do that a couple of times throughout the year. So that is an additional cost. But other than that, there is no additional cost in the first year. Like we don't even recommend anyone uh, uh, contemplate entering into paid advertising, specifically Facebook and Instagram ads, until they've sold two thousand dollars directly from their own website. Yeah. Okay. Um, do, do you um, like? Uh, I do LinkedIn. Yes. So um, I heard from you know a couple of artists that that was a good place to go to. Yeah, it can be. I mean, I don't, I don't think LinkedIn necessarily has as high an ROI, ROI, return on investment, time, energy, and talent, whatever, hours, um, as, as do the socials, Facebook and Instagram. But if you have an audience, an engaged audience on LinkedIn, LinkedIn can work very well as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, how much time should you use for marketing? I know Great that's question. a loaded question. Yeah, totally, loaded, <laughs> totally loaded question, but it's okay. You know, the the in in and it is a loaded question, but you know the, the beauty of it is I got to give a loaded answer, right? Everyone uh, everyone asks that question, and it's a it's a it's a version of what I call the crystal ball question, right? Like my mom goes to her financial advisor and says, like, am I gonna have enough money for retirement? And the financial advisor is like, let me look and let me look into the crystal ball, right? He doesn't know what's gonna happen. Stocks go up, stocks go down. Da, 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 da. You, 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 it's less about how many hours you can give me. And it's 100% about giving me those hours consistently week in, week out for 52 weeks a year, which no one does. No one does. It's less about how many hours a week and more about those hours week in, week out, no stop, 52 weeks a year. And so we have some that, are, that, you know, that still have full-time jobs. They can only throw an hour, two hours a week. Fine. Give me the two hours a week for 52 weeks a year. Will your business grow faster the more hours you can throw at it? Yes, absolutely. But the only thing that you need to take away is everyone's got their own because we're good at this we know we will make sure that your hours that you do have to give are devoted to the highest roi uh, activities that they possibly can be so that's what i would say and usually what happens is they everyone carves out the amount of hours that they can do once the, the wins start happening the sales start happening then the hour commitment just goes up naturally right because you're excited and you know you're 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 filled with the enthusiasm of selling more and more so that's what i'd say Okay. Yeah. Um, what about returns? How does that work? Complete non-issue at all. Happens very infrequently. If anything is broken, busted, or damaged as a result of the printers, the printers just take care of it. Usually they'll just print out another one instantaneously. They don't even make you send back the old one uh, because okay. they do so much volume. And then we have boilerplate language for the returns that goes on your website just so you're covered, but it happens so, so infrequently, extremely mm -hmm. infrequently. Um, what uh, resolution files do you need to upload? You have what you have. You upload what you can. We can we can take up to ad infinitum, and then what happens is you upload the file that you have. Our system runs its little algorithm, and then it comes back with all the sizes that you can use. So if you're happy with that, we're happy with that. Off you go. So like 300 DPI. DPI, yeah, it's great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. What about, um, do, do we come up with our own domain? Yes, name? yes, yes. Okay. So we just create that and then we... Point, yeah, then then you just direct direct the domain. I mean, we want the artist to own everything, right? And so, you know, Susan Woes, SusanWoesArt.com, you point it at art storefronts and then, then the website just lives right there. So pretty easy. Yeah, okay. Um, well, I guess... Uh, That covers it. I, I guess. <laughs> right. well, good, 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 good meeting you. Good meeting you, Susan. I love. Uh, I really do love the last name. It's a, it's a great last name. Woes. Um, okay. So W. Let's see. Okay, W. Curtis, you're up next. That's right. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Is it Curtis? Is, did I get it right, now. Curtis or Curtis? Right. Yes, it's Curtis. Good. It's, the orig it's the original spelling. Very good. All Curtis is related to me. That's right. I love it. Uh, I in in just joining your program through through half of the procedure. Uh, all the things that you're presenting are almost everything I've ever tried. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, it's it's amazing to hear you put it all together. One of the biggest experiences. Are you there? Yeah, I got you. I had I had oh, to stop. Shit, I lost a bit. I lost it. No, no, no. It's okay. I stopped. Uh, I, I stopped your video because the, anyway, your the, audio uh, is going in and out. Yeah, go. Okay. Uh, I got to I got to notice that my internet was getting flexible. Anyway, uh, it all comes back to the presentation, the 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 face to face, because I had it one time. I was requested to show some of my art to a gentleman, having to be a dentist, okay. and I showed him one and a three of them and 16 by 20s mounted framed the whole nine yards mm -hmm. and the reaction i got off of one of them was great i like it it's gonna look great right here. oh by the way how much you want for it i was so unprepared i kind of uh, uh uh i said 300 bucks he says he turned and he said write the man a check to his office assistant mm -hmm. I had it happen one other time, same, the same exact thing. So the, the recognizing that acknowledgement that you get when you make the sale mm -hmm. is it, tremendous. Yes, it is. And, and then later on, I went in, I happened to have a chance to go into a, to a, uh, a shop and uh, I learned how to sell wine. And it was being able to put in that personal definition of, this is my personal favorite. And I was able, I perfected that to the point that I could sell a case of wine in, in less than 90 seconds by just getting them to taste the wine. Now, being able to present the visuals is, that's been my limitation because up until a while ago, I hated the marketing because it would take so much time out of my creative process. And I've even went to the extent now that I will not print anything that is under 30 by 40 inches. Okay. Because it's just to have that large print being able to present something that fills up somebody's whole wall it is, and, and again, the size matters because then you can demand a greater price. So my, my question for you is, what do I sign up and how do I sign up? Yeah, so. And, we'll, oh, by the way, I'll pay it. What do you want? <laughs> Thanks, Curtis. We'll, we'll send you, there's, there'll, there'll be links in the chat. There'll be links in the email we send you after the fact. So what we do is we do a, a demo process. Um, you request a demo. You fill out some information. They call you. You can ask any questions about pricing, this, that, the other. And then they take you through an hour Zoom, which shows you like all the features, bells and whistles of which we have just a ton, um, a ton that, 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 that no one's even seen yet, which are, which are really cool. So just request a demo and we'll, we'll get you all sorted. Okay. Well, one other thing is my daughter turned me on to this mm -hmm. and she's doing basically the same thing that I've been doing on this side, which is visual design mm -hmm. and marketing. Uh, and my whole thing has been the electronics and the technology. Uh, uh, so for that, uh, you've answered my questions. I'm into the line. We'll go from there. I appreciate your presentation. It all fits. It's all there. I'm ready to proceed. Awesome. So, several other types of online quote marketing, such that you know, recognizing the scams is and has always been limiting me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these things, but you put it together in such in, in a manner that 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 approaches and pre, is present is a presentation such that a creative person can then move on. Yeah, I mean, there's guy, there's so much. There, so, and, when, and thanks, Curtis. Your 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 thing was cutting out like crazy, so I muted you. But you know, there's so many snake oil salesmen in this industry out there. I mean, it is absolutely ridiculous, right? And look. If, <laughs> It, it, the, the common sense just holds. If, 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 it, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is, right? Like, do we have an amazing product? Yes, we do. Uh, do we have amazing support? Yes, we do. Amazing education? Yes, we do. Uh, can you put all of it to use and become incredibly successful? Yes, you can. Does that mean it's going to be easy? Absolutely not, right? And especially the first couple of years where you're grinding hard on the mar marketing and you're learning the marketing. 
But boy, once you do and you're focused on the on, on all the right things, it really can be an incredible business. Uh, and, and it's such an incredible time to be working on all that stuff because, you know, the demand for art is as high as it's ever been. This was like one of the things that was like outlined in that report. The demand for art is the highest it's ever been. And yet the available sources of where you might be able to purchase it is as low as it's ever been, right? All the galleries out of business, or, or half of them, or some large percentage, the show and fair circuit barely going on. So it, it demand at an all time high and the available venues for where it's for sale right now is an all time low. Like that's crazy, right? That's like a, that's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. So for those that, that are working on their marketing, for those that, that, that did work on their marketing pr prior to it, you know, they're absolutely thriving. They're having some of their biggest years and you would not expect that to be the case in the middle of COVID, right? Which is just crazy. Um, so yeah, it's just been a fantastically interesting time. Really, really interesting time. Um, yeah. Um, do you work with art galleries interested in making online sales? Yeah, I mean, the software, the software done works for an art gallery the same as it works for anyone else. Uh, like if you're an art gallery, all good. You could take it, go at it, run it, everything else. Um, we have some we have some huge customers that are that are art galleries that do extremely well with it. Are you? Let me let me ask you, Don. I want to unmute, unmute you. Um, do you do do you sell a bunch of prints or is it all originals? You'll have to hit your mic icon, Don, and then I'll let you know. It's bottom left hand corner. I thought you had it, and then you didn't have it. I still don't have it. Yeah. There. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. I'm in a library and some of the top South students that have the mask on. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. A local gallery that's been working with me for two years and they're looking how to accelerate their online business. So mm -hmm. I'll go direct to the, when I get the replay today, I'll just send it to the art yeah. director and I think she'll get in touch if they're interested. Yeah. Yeah. So we can help each other. Um, I've been there for two years. Um, anyway, I will do a demo and get all my questions answered, the rest of them, but thank you so much. This was an awesome presentation and you seem to know exactly what I needed to hear today. Wonderful. Appreciate I that. I listened to the recorded one last week, but I, I learned like 100% more this week by doing this one that I listened to the recorded one. So thank you so much. You have a wonderful week. I look forward to working with all of you and I will schedule a demo. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate you saying that. Thank and, you. And, 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 and by the way, just to underscore my, my point, um, you know, how long would it have taken you through the traditional, through the traditional ways, Don? You're checking out the website, you know, you're reading an article here or there. Maybe you go watch a, a YouTube video. Maybe you download the podcast and you start listening to that. Like the fact that we were able to jump on a Zoom call and you were able to look somebody in the eye and have a presentation face to face, how, it truncated the timeline for you to get to know, like, and trust these people know what they're talking about. So guess what? Do you think that doesn't work the same way for selling art? contemplate that right like I go to your website or maybe I see something in the gallery like no I want to have a conversation with Don I want to understand what makes him tick what what inspired him to paint these things feel like I know him what do you think that does to the sales cycle of buying art the exact same thing it's doing here this is just as efficient and as effective a marketing channel as you could possibly have aside from being face to face and and, and you know like the, the video is just changing absolutely everything um, so it's a, it's a phenomenal thing for the gallery and, you know, I've ranted, um, in the past about the gallery thing, like so significantly, because if I owned a gallery right now, I would pay for the most expensive web connection that exists. I would throw down the railroad tracks for a camera dolly inside the gallery. I would let artists know that they can come in and hang their show. I'll help them hang their show. I would turn on the cameras, have a live art show for all of my high net worth people, let them see it all. The second the show is over, I would say, I have the artist here. If anyone is interested in a one-on-one -on -one showing, have some questions, I would turn my cameras back on. The art, the, my high net worth individuals would be able to talk to the artist right then and there, negotiate, get the deal done. Then that artist's entire stuff is out. I would have an entire new artist collection in the next day. And let me tell you, there's no shortage of artists right now that would jump at the opportunity to do this. And that's what my gallery would be. And I would prob I probably should go and do that because it's such a smart idea. Uh, 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 and, it, and, it, and it gives you just the opportunity to reach everyone. But you know, the, the, best way to, the best way to buy art is in a gallery, right? Like it's so beautiful. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it's such an amazing way just you know, a, a nice venue, all the white walls. It's all about the art. Maybe like a couple of nice furniture pieces here or there. So yeah, that's what I would say. Um, okay, so Tish says, I'm so sick of listening to the how-to podcasts and videos. 
tell me about it, Tish. I have to record half of those things. I'm sick of listening to myself too. Um, just tell me how the engine runs. Honesty is the key to earning trust. Tell me how the engine runs. I don't know what you're talking about, Tish. I mean, you know, everything that we do, <laughs> everything that we do is showing you how the engine runs. The engine runs, my dear, by pouring gas in the tank and stepping on the gas. Um, you know, <laughs> that's, that's how, that's how, oh, okay, okay, I take it back, Tish. Um, she said not, she's saying not me, like some of the other ones. Well, I appreciate that, Tish. You're, you're, back, you're, you're back on my nice list, Tish, okay? I was worried about it for a second, Tish, but you're back on my nice list now. Um, do you have any data on whether it's effective or a money pit to contract with someone to handle the social media marketing and website design so many other artists don't want to bother with? No, you, you don't have... You don't have the website problem, okay? No one here has a website problem. If I was the genie and I just came out of the lamp and I granted you your one wish, which means I will build your entire website on whatever platform you want, I will do that and snap on my fingers. Guess what? Your business is not fundamentally changing in the slightest. You don't have the website problem. You have a marketing problem, every single solitary one of you. You do not need any website design, you know, especially if you sign up with us. We don't even let you do website design. Waste of time. Um, you need a s simple site that can transact commerce uh, and does so effectively. You already have that uh, uh, in spades, and so you don't have to worry about that at all. In terms of the social media marketing, um, to contract somebody, yes, you can. And you know, I'm I'm very much of you know I said it in my video like I want you guys all to you're you're essentially a solopreneur, and you know it's like you're a franchise owner, like you own a McDonald's, right? Like. So can you contact somebody to operate the register? Yeah, you can, but guess what? You need to learn how to operate that register yourself first. Otherwise, how are you gonna know that they're doing it correctly? So I sort of prefer that you learn how to do the social media marketing on your own. Uh, uh, and so you get, you have that, you have the measure of how it all works and how it all goes. And then you can contract out um, later, later on down the line. That's sort of how I feel about that. Um, okay, I'm just trying to scroll up, get, getting all the questions going. Yes, we will. Of course, we're going to send the um, we're going to send the replay to everyone after the fact, so you, you can watch it. Um, everything else. Uh, da, 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 da. But I did get the exposure. Congrats, Beverly, on selling your painting. That's awesome. Um, are there any other costs besides the monthly fee? Uh, that was from Susan. We talked about that. Um, yes, work with galleries. Uh, yes, the replay. Oh yeah, Don. I mean, Hootsuite. Hoot sweet, this sweet, that sweet, it doesn't matter. Um, whatever works for you. You can you can use Facebook's back end to schedule updates just as easily. It's not a it's not a make it or break it thing. It's just a you know, another one of the things. Um, a website is nothing more than a billboard anymore. Sort of true, sort of true on some level. That not entirely true, right? Like, you know, it can it can it still helps. It still helps a ton. Um, you know, uh that that it's there and it can sell when you sleep and have those conversations. It's a very important venue that you sell in, but it's not the be all end all. Yeah, Susan, so all of the websites look the same by design, right? Everything that we attempt to do when we sell art and photography is get back to the best way to sell art and photography, which is face to face, person to person. All of the websites are completely minimalist by design. They're designed to replicate the art buying experience that you would get if you walked into a gallery. Artist problems, okay, is when they try to do the websites on their own, they they try to throw their design in this and that and you know their style and the various colors. None of that is how art sells. That's why all those portfolio sites never do a damn thing, right? Like we, we have it figured out. You don't have a website problem. You sign up, you get your work up, you start on your marketing, game over. That's that's the ball game. So that's where we're at. All right, I think that does it. I think we covered everything. Um, yeah, so Steven, it's really it's really easy. It's just a switch, right? Like, um, you own the you own the URL, which is now currently pointed at Thazo. All you do is log into GoDaddy or wherever you have it. You point it to the art storefronts one. It's done in two seconds. You don't even have to get rid of your Thazo one either. You can just leave it. So the way the way that it works, whether it's Thazo or any of these SaaS companies, is we have the domain. Thazo has the domain, right? So you know, if you sign up for Art Storefronts, you've got stephengary.artstorefronts.com. All you're doing is taking your domain, pointing it at that, and it's changing to your domain. Same, so too with Fazo. So it's, you know, the minute you get going, boom, it's switched over, done. Um, really, really easy. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else. We've got a deal running till the end of the month, don't we? What is the discount this month? Oh, yeah. Six. Oh, yeah. So six, 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 six extra free months if you sign up by the end of the month, I think is the the thing that we're uh, that we're running right now, um, which is a good deal. 
you know, what I recommend is if you're just learning, don't worry about it. Like you don't need to put in a demo. You don't need to do anything. If, if you're sort of on the fence or you're curious enough to learn more, put the demo request in. It's not, it's not like a death commitment. It's, it's, our people don't call and harass. What happens is you put the demo request in, they'll call you. It's a 10 to 15 minute call. They'll answer all of your questions, anything that I didn't cover, anything that I missed, and then you can decide if you want to schedule the demo. If you don't, they'll never call you again. So they're not like pushy. Um, but that's only if you're interested. Otherwise, we run three of these guys a week. Um, sometimes, mostly it's me, sometimes it's members of this team. Um, got a great YouTube channel, put out some really cool stuff, some really cool content. I want all of you guys to check out that report. We'll email it to you. I think it's super fascinating. Um, the, the Art Basel one, super fascinating. Uh, just to see those numbers because, you know, despite the fact it's the pros, a lot of it trickles down, um, you know, to, to, to the level everyone else is playing on. So, yeah, on that note, guys, thanks for, thanks for hanging out. Great session. Um, hope you all have an absolutely tremendous rest of your Friday, a wonderful weekend, and uh, hope, to, uh, hope to see many of you guys again soon. Hopefully someone on the inside.